Howdy, Moz fans, and welcome to another edition of Whiteboard Friday. This week, we're going to chat about click-through rate, queries and clicks, uh, long versus short clicks, and queries themselves in terms of how they impact the rankings. So recently, we've had, uh, in the last year, a ton of very interesting experiments, or at least a small handful of very interesting experiments, looking at the impact that could be had by getting together, you know, kind of a sample set of searchers and having them perform queries, uh, click on things, click on things and click the back button. And these experiments have actually shown results, at least some of them have, others, others haven't, and there's interesting dichotomies between the two that I'll talk about at the end of this. But uh, because of that, and because of some uh, recent patent applications and some uh, research papers that have come to light from the search engines themselves, we started to rethink the way user and usage data are making their way into search engines, and we're starting to rethink the importance of them. You can see that in the uh, ranking factor survey this year, folks giving user and usage data a higher than ever uh, you know, uh, sentiment around the importance of that information in, in search rankings. So let me talk about three different elements uh, that we're experiencing and that we have been talking about in the SEO world and how they can impact your rankings potentially. So first off is queries themselves. Uh, and this has to do primarily with a paper that Google wrote or a patent application that they wrote around uh, site quality and uh, the quality of search results. Queries themselves could be used in the search results to say, hey, wait a minute, we see, we Google, see a lot of searches that are combining a brand name with a generic term or phrase. And because we're seeing that, we might start to associate the generic term with the brand term. I'll give you an example. So I've done a search here for sushi rice. You can see there's Alton Brown ranking number one, and then norecipes.com, uh, makemysushi.com, and then Morimoto. Uh, uh, Morimoto's recipe is in food and wine. And if lots and lots of folks are, are starting to say like, wow, Morimoto sushi rice is just incredible. And it kind of starts up this movement around how do we recreate uh, Morimoto sushi rice? So many, many people are performing searches specifically for Morimoto sushi rice, not just generic sushi rice. Google might start to see that and say, you know what? Because I see that hundreds of people a day are searching for this particular uh, brand, the Morimoto sushi rice recipe, maybe I should take the result from Morimoto on foodandwine.com and move that higher up in the rankings than I normally would have them. Those queries themselves are impacting the search results for the non-branded version, just the sushi rice version of that query. And Google's written about this. Uh, we're doing some interesting testing around this right now with the iMac Labs, and maybe I'll be able to report more soon in the future on the impact of that. Some folks in the SEO space have already reported that they see this impact as their brand grows and as these brand associations grow, their rankings for the non-branded term rise as well, even if they're not earning a bunch of links or getting a lot of other ranking signals that you'd normally expect. Second one is clicks and click-through rate. So uh, Google might be thinking, right, if, if there's a result that's significantly overperforming its rankings ordinary uh, position performance, right? So if, for example, we say, um, you know, let's look at the third result, right? Here's uh, how to make perfect sushi rice. This is from makemysushi.com. Let's imagine that uh, the normal, in, in this set of search results, that on average, the position three result gets about 11%. But Google is seeing that these guys, makemysushi.com, is getting a 25% click-through rate, much higher than their normal 11%. Well, Google might kind of scratch their head and go, you know what? It seems like whatever the snippet is here, or the, the, the title, the domain, uh, the meta description, whatever we're showing here is really interesting, folks. And so perhaps we should rank them higher than they rank today. Maybe that click-through rate is a signal to Google of, gosh, people are deeply interested in this. It's more interesting than the average result of that position. Let's move them up. And this is something that, uh, that I've tested, that iMac Lab has have, have tested, and seen results, at least when it's done with real searchers and enough of them to have an impact. You can kind of uh, observe this. There was a post on my blog last year, and we did another experiment, well, a series of several experiments, uh, several of which have showed results time and time again. That's a pretty interesting one that click-through rate can be done like that. The third one, and the final one we'll talk about today, is long versus short clicks. Uh, so, you know, this is essentially, 
if searchers are clicking on a particular result, but they're immediately clicking the back button, right, and going back to the search results and choosing a different result, that could tell the search engine, could tell Google that, you know, maybe that result's not that great. Uh, maybe searchers are deeply unhappy with that result for whatever reason. For example, uh, let's say Google looked at number two, right, the uh, uh, norecipes.com, and they looked at number four from food and wine, and they said, gosh, the number two result has an average time on site of 11 seconds and a bounce back to the SERPs rate of 76%. So 76% of searchers who click on food and wine from this particular search, uh, sorry, click on uh, no recipes, come back and choose a different result. That, that's clearly, they're very disappointed. But number four, the food and wine result, right, from Morimoto, time on site average is, is like two minutes and 50 seconds. That's where we see them. And of course, they can get this data from places like, right, Chrome. They can get it from Android. They are not necessarily looking at the same numbers that you're looking at in your analytics. They're not taking it from Google Analytics. I, I believe them when they say that they're not. But certainly, if you look at the uh, terms of use in terms of service for Chrome and Android, oh, they are allowed to collect that data and use it any way they want. Uh, and the return to SERPs rate is only 9%. So 91% of the people who are hitting food and wine, they're staying on there. They're satisfied. They don't have to search for sushi rice recipes anymore. They're happy. Well, this tells. Google, maybe, maybe that number two result is not making my searchers happy, and potentially I should rank number four instead. There's some important items to consider around all this, because if your gears turn the way my gears turn, you're always thinking like, wait a minute, can't black hat folks manipulate this stuff? Isn't this really open to uh, all sorts of noise and, and problems? And the answer is, yeah, it could be, but remember a few things. First off, gaming this almost never works. In fact, there was a great study published on Search Engine Land that was, uh, it was called, I think, something like click-through rate is not an organic ranking signal. It doesn't work. Uh, and it talked about a guy who fired up a ton of proxy servers, had them click a bunch of stuff, right, faking traffic essentially by using bots, and didn't see any movement at all. Now, but you compare that to another report that was published on Search Engine Land, again, just recently, which replicated the experiment that I and the iMac Labs folks did using real human beings, and they did see results, right? The rankings rose rather quickly and, and kind of stayed there. So real human beings searching, very different story from bots searching. And I think, look, we remember uh, back in the days when AdWords first came out, right, when, when Omniture was there, that uh, Google did, spent a ton of time and a lot of work to identify fraudulent types of clicks, fraudulent types of search activity, and they do a great job of limiting that in the AdWords account. I, I'm sure that they're doing that on the organic SEO side as well. So manipulation is going to be very, very tough, if not impossible. If you don't get real searchers and a real pattern that looks like um, you know, a bunch of people who are logged in, logged out, geographically distributed, uh, distributed by demographic profile, distributed by previous searcher behavior, you know, look like they're real normal people searching. If you don't have that kind of a pattern, this stuff is not going to work. And plenty of our experiments didn't work as well. Uh, even if none of this is a ranking factor, even if you, even if you say to yourself, you know what, Rand, none of the experiments that uh, you ran or iMac Labs ran or the, folk, the, the search engine land study published, none of them, I don't believe them. I think they're all wrong. I find holes in all of them. Guess what? So what? Doesn't matter. Is there any reason that you wouldn't optimize for a higher click-through rate? Is there any reason you wouldn't optimize for longer clicks versus shorter clicks? Is there any reason that you wouldn't optimize to try and get more branded search traffic, people associating your brand with the generic term? No way. You're going to do this anyway. It's one of those wonderful benefits of doing holistic, broad thinking SEO and broad organic marketing in general that helps you whether you believe these are ranking signals or not. And that's a great thing. And then third and finally, I, I did want to mention, and I'll link to a few of these uh, experiments, well, to, to the set of experiments that we've seen out there about, uh, about these topics. But the experiments have been somewhat inconsistent, but there are some patterns in them. As we've been running these, what we've seen is if you get more people searching, you tend to have a much better chance of getting a good result. The tests that I ran you know, on Twitter and on social media that had several thousand people participating, boop, 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 rose right up to the top real fast. The ones that only had a few hundred people didn't seem to move the needle. 
Uh, same story with long tail queries versus more head, of tail, more head of the demand curve stuff. It's harder to move more entrenched rankings just like it would be with links. Uh, and the results tend to t last only between a few hours and a few days. And I think that makes total sense as well because after you've inflated the click signals or query signals or long click signals or whatever it is uh, with these experimental results, over time, those are gonna fall away and the, the norm that existed previously is gonna return. And so naturally, you would expect to see those results return back to what they were prior to the experiments. So with all that said, I'm looking forward to some great discussion in the Q&A. I know that plenty of you out there have been uh, trying and experimenting on your own with this stuff. And some of you have seen great results from improving your click-through rates, improving your snippets, making your pages better for searchers and keeping them on it longer. Uh, and I'm sure we're gonna have some interesting discussion about all these, these types of experiments. So we'll see you again next week for another edition of Whiteboard Friday. Take care.